What's going on YouTube? I actually have no reason to put that zoo footage in here, but I never went to the zoo and thought it would make some good b-roll. So let me just go ahead and warn you that the best part of the video was probably the zoo clips and the, the song that's in the background because it's, it's super catchy. <laughs> Anyways, we're doing portfolio reviews. The highly requested, the return of the series portfolio reviews. I'm doing it with my friend Mike. I've made a couple of videos with him like four months after Kobu Camp, Life of a Junior Developer type deal. You can go check out his YouTube channel if you want. That'd be cool. So I figured, you know, two pairs of eyes is better than one. You might see something that I don't, and hopefully you like this dynamic. But I appreciate all you guys for sending in the portfolios, and I have a lot more to do, so I'm sorry if yours isn't in there. Just kind of picked randomly from my email when I typed in portfolio in the search bar and whatever came up. Again, if you do send it in, try not to have your phone number on there or your address, stuff like that. Like, I do my best to blur it out, but you gotta remember, you, you, you mailed it to me, right? It's, I do it as a courtesy, but you know you're sending it to me with, with possibility review on the channel. If you'd like to support the channel, I've got some new products up. I've got a new Zero Experience cover letter because that was highly requested. And um, there's a Node course, a Node backend project, how to make endpoints. And then also I put the, the source code of my game that I put on the App Store. So if you want to download that and publish it yourself or modify it or whatever, so you can go check that out if you want. That supports the channel because YouTube won't give me my join button. I don't know why. They just keep telling me, sorry, Josh, there's no ETA. You just have to wait, even though I'm like 30,000 subscribers. I'm really salty, can you tell? Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I appreciate all you guys for sending in the portfolios. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, first up we got Caitlin Frederick. Let's take a look at her profile. My work, both buttons needed, that's good. Good stuff, got animations here, that's cool. It'd be cool to have a link to your resume up front next to your view projects rather than making me go up to this top right and click resume. Blog, you have kind of like a blog, it's more of like a post. Oh, you have a YouTube. Wait, is this just a link to YouTube? Oh man, now everyone saw my subscriptions. Rip. Free Code Camp, Udemy. So these are just uh, favorite resources blog, I guess. Can I go back? There's no back button. Social media, we got your email. Those the buttons work. That's good. About skills, I'm self-taught. I think you're giving away too much information in this about section. And I think you should remove the skill section because that should be on your resume. I think you could put, I'm a self-taught front-end developer currently located in X. I'm pursuing an opportunity in this. Um, don't talk about what you intended on doing. Couldn't finish for financial reasons, blah, blah. Like that's just too much info that no one, nobody needs to have. I don't need to have that info. Employers don't need to have that info. YouTube viewers don't need to have that info. It's just too much. Um, I'd break up the skills to another page if you're going to keep it and not stack them like this because there's so much empty space on the right side. It's an odd way to lay it out. There's just a lot of empty space on the right side and they're all big and there's not that many skills so you can put pictures for each one or something like that. So we got MongoDB, you got a lot of cool skills here, live version, GitHub. I, li I like the way these are done. They're a little bit uneven which is, it's not like a deal breaker or anything but these two are flush and this one's not. You could probably fix that somehow. Uh, there's one typo here, IMDB API. IMDB is all uppercase, you missed that B there. It's the shining star here, you got links to everything that you need, you're just making me click too much. Yeah, These should be on the great. very front page, like the very, very front home page here. Site. Less clicks is better. Okay, I don't know what to do with this one. All right, Mike, we're reviewing another mic. So I'll let you go first. What do you think about it? Well, I'm on a bigger monitor, so everything scales out. And the first thing I could say is I didn't, I did not see the top uh, right hamburger button or whatever it's called. I didn't actually see that, so I was just looking around for things to click on. This, what was that? this is typically reserved for mobile devices, hamburger icons. So if I if I go to 50%, this will put me at 4K resolution. I wouldn't be able to see this button. There's 2K. It's also a bigger monitor, so it just I had to turn my head, and it's just if there was a bit more contrast there. I like the idea you're going for, right? Like horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical. Where I'm gonna click here. We got your picture, which is I'm 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 always like remove the picture because. People are mean and judgmental, and you might look yeah. like somebody that subconsciously, I don't know, there's a lot of reasons. In Europe, it's more prominent to put your picture, but in the US, they can go to your LinkedIn and get and get a picture. I'm gonna go to your portfolio here. Live version, view code, perfect. That's what I wanna see. I'm gonna go to the about. Definitely think it's a bit annoying to have to click the hamburger button every single time to go through pages. It'd be nice to have a little header. Yeah, it is. I do have to re-click this every single time. And then if I go to the contact page, Makes sense for mobile, but not for desktop. Just a Google form nested in here. It's kind of neat. One thing I did notice here is that when I go to your about and I open this hamburger, we got double pictures. Is yeah. it responsive? I mean, it's... I mean, it's already kind of responsive, but... Yeah, it works like a phone, you know, like a mobile site. It's simple. It's simple, but you're making me click from the 
homepage to figure out what I want to find. All right, Mike. Thanks for sending it in. There's no personal info. Well, there's actually not. I think of it. There's no resume on here. You should probably include that. Mike, I appreciate you too. Other Mike. Both Mike. Which, which one? <laughs> Both Mike's. It's actually cool. I kind of. This gives me Nike vibes. Nike vibes. Right? Yeah, it is Nike yeah. vibes. That, that. Or like Gillette, the best a man can get. Well, it's, like, I mean, maybe I don't on know. hover, his beard disappears. <laughs> that clean shave. <laughs> yeah. All right, this is the first thing we gotta talk about here. If I go to your about page, you're rating your skills before I even get a chance to. So why would you tell anyone that you're, what is this, sixty percent? Never tell someone your percentage of skill. They'll figure that out when they give what you the code mean? test. Yeah, I mean. Right. Like to me, that can mean one thing, and to you, that can mean the total opposite. Yeah, sixty percent of node. Would, yeah, exactly. That's, that's just very subjective. Remove rating yourself. They'll rate you after you take the test. This could make or break you going to the next step. They might be like, yeah. what is this? Well, if he's, look at this, all this gap. Well, no, we need a rock star in React. But what you know in React could be that rock star amount. But they see this and they're like, oh, oof, yeah, not going to happen. A full React bar could be one year experience. And maybe you have five. Under your about me, let me tell you a little about me. There's no E on the little. I think maybe, it, I mean, that's just, there's, there's some English stuff here. For example, I am swimming, there, you know, two M's here. You know, shorten this down, be like, I'm a web developer who's in love with programming. I love learning about new technologies. And then I would cut it there. Uh, on my on my screen, the nav bar is like halfway down. It's just not scalable, prob I mean, oh, it's just not yeah. scaling right. The, the footer. Yeah, the footer, that's what I meant. Okay, yeah, because you're on 4K, so this doesn't scale. Through. Yeah. Yeah, so you got your you got your address and apartment number, all that stuff. Don't don't put that there. There is here is how we can reach me. Uh, I don't understand. You don't need to put we. You know, just l remove this and leave contact me there. That would be fine. Um, there's yeah. just some English stuff that I really think, although minor, it from your address it looked like you were in California, and if you're in California, they're gonna assume that you know th these little things will matter if you're working on product facing stuff especially if they give you content to write i really, really like how stuff. he shows his projects the yellow tint that goes over i like that i'm not sure yeah it's it's hard to indicate if either of these buttons are clickable because once you mouse over it yeah, turns the whole into the, thing becomes yeah i'd get rid of the project one project two project three especially the fact that project one is at the bottom for me and project two is at the top Oh yeah. We'll just put the actual name of the project. Yeah, because it does it say project one at the bottom for you? Thanks for thanks for sending it in. We appreciate you. Alright, we're looking at Raymond J here. First off, Raymond J, um, I realize you built this with the React boilerplate because your little icon on the tab has not been changed, nor has the title of your application been changed. So this is a dead yes. giveaway that you built this with boilerplate. You're gonna need to fix that ASAP. That's very like oh he just whipped this up in two minutes, which it doesn't really matter, but Everything else looks yeah. so nice, and then you leave this one thing. Uh, if I just open up his GitHub and actually go to his portfolio repo, I can see that he uses a boilerplate because it says this project was bootstrapped to create React app. Portfolio, yeah. okay, right yeah. here. Yeah, so you left the you left the React strap or the React boilerplate in here. Yeah. Change your README. Yeah. Just give a little description of what you did here. I'm liking that he has a high quality picture. It's rest out on my screen and it? still looks really good. Oh, yeah. it's set to attach. Nice. Yeah, everything scales to 4K. Looks good. What sets me apart? I don't know if I would put this here. I don't think I would give them that sort of information before they ask about it. Because you might say something here that just totally sets you apart that you're now disqualified from the job. It's a game. You need to feel out your employer. You got to feel out their attitude, their energy, if they're, you know, feeling like they're more relaxed and more uptight. You got to, like, by doing this, you've already removed that ability to feel someone out and kind of say the right thing. If you're going to be like, well, you should just be yourself in the interview, that's not true. Don't do that. You're, it's an interview. It's a competition. Yeah. Do you have an issue with the, the mobile? Oh, yeah. Mobile scales everything down. If I, if I put on the iPad, does that fix? Nope. On iPad is broke. My current on-job practices. You can talk about this stuff in your cover letter. Don't, don't do this stuff. Priceless mentorship. I can provide... Wait, what? Coding alone is hard and progress is slow. Working with a team is a two-way relationship wherever I can provide value to you. So this is pretty big. I really like this photography template, how your projects are laid out with the bullet points, technologies used, live preview, and source private, so we can't see that. I like how you talk about the, the role, project difficulties, and your solution to those difficulties, which is super cool. It'd be cool if I could see the code, though, because I mean, I don't actually know if you wrote this. It's not in your GitHub. You could just be linking something and claiming it for yourself, you know? I think you should remove this important things to know about me. I just don't think, I don't think that you should leave this here. Uh, get to the interview. 
just get to the interview and talk about it there. Don't eliminate any chances to get to that conversation. And by putting all this stuff, people can start to form judgments about you as a person rather than just see what you can do. So for, for everyone out there watching, my role, project difficulties, and solution. So this goes from problem to solution and why it's better because of it. Notable features is awesome. Uh, so I would recommend you guys start doing this. All right, Corey Borg, experience portfolio process pricing. This is pretty neat. Um, that's pretty neat. So we have design, development, I'd make design clickable, or de I'd make design and development clickable. So if I want to see your actual templates, like if you designed an Adobe XD or whatever, if I could click on design, or maybe it pops up like a model with your designs, or some me to your GitHub with some pictures. Of your, you know, I want to see the designs, not just know that you did it. Yeah, if you're talking about design, you need to have those those mockups, those wireframes, that dribble, that Behance. I need to see all that's a Marvel application before yeah. you developed it. So if I go to more info, it takes me there. And if I click app demo, it takes me to something slightly different. I'm, I'm still kind of not sure what to do like with this content. It's just a lot of reading and I don't think. But like no one's going to read the web design process because they assume that you already know it. They just want to know if you can do this or not. I, I, I don't know. This is kind of like a, like a content site to help me create or if I wanted to do this, how I would do it. I get what you're going for, right? You're, you're showing people the process of how this goes. And then at the bottom, you're like, oh, by the way, I can help you. I, I doubt that they're here because they're wanting to learn how to do it or what it's about. You know what I mean? And I don't see that to be like mean or like a douchebag or a jerk. I just think that would be the real practical use case for it. I'm still not sure what this take advantage of the cloud is because um, you have no real links other to, to anywhere. It's a lot of filtering to find what I really want, which is who is he? What does he know? Where are his projects? All right, so Corey, I'm looking at your pricing section, and I can just say that you're going to eliminate some people that are considering you. I get that you're trying to be transparent with these prices and kind of like just say what you think your value is up front, and I get that and I respect that, but you're going to eliminate some people just by doing this. So I'm going to show you what you're actually asking for. So you have $30, $35, $40 an hour. So if I take that, we'll do 30, multiply it by 2, and then we'll add 4% to that. So you, you're asking for 62.4K a year. And what are you offering in return? Custom coding, mobile responsiveness. I mean, I've seen back-end jobs that offer this or full-stack jobs that offer this. And then again, we can do the same thing. So we take 40, multiply that by two, and then we add 4% to it. So you're asking for 83.2K a year. Um, that's how they're gonna see it. You're gonna put it like this, but they're gonna see it in terms of salary. I don't understand. So you have Corey Borg and then your name Corey Boyko here. Um, I'm not gonna throw a bunch of fancy sounding words at you. Um, not to be mean or rude, but you kind of already did that when I, like the web design process page here. Like there's a lot of fancy stuff going on here. I, I think this just needs some organization. That would be my takeaway. Yeah, just a lot of content, but I have to filter through it to find what I really want. It'd be a lot better to just throw all your big texts into a blog, or, or at least like the, the last page. I didn't even know that you had pricing options. Why would I come here to get pricing? I, I don't I don't know what you do. On the first page, it's just projects. And then you have no call to action anywhere that's like interested in what I can do for you. I think that's what's throwing me off. But you're getting my reaction from, uh, it'd probably be similar to someone else's except they're probably just going to be confused and leave. We appreciate you, Corey. Seriously. Thanks for thanks for having the guts to send it in. All right, we're going to zone dev. This is like, I can't, I feel like I can unstick this from my mouse, but I can't. Like, it's just stuck. Don't make me go to this menu and then navigate this menu to find what I want. All I'm trying to do is find, it, is find your work. This should be on your main page. So, oh, it says our work. I'm clicking on our work and it doesn't let me. Okay, so yeah, same start a project. What does that do? Is it a contact thing? You deserve happiness. Let's build your brand together. This is very light. It's very light gray on a light gray background. It's difficult. Um, on this About Us page, the menu on the left is kind of invisible. Took me a second to get my bearings. Yeah, so our work is here, and I can't click on it. And if you're going to be a little development shop, first of all, I shouldn't have to come here to find your work. I should just be able to see it. Uh, wait, what? How do I get back to your main page? Home? I don't know why you have an option to come back to home because there's no, there's nothing here for me to do. It's weird. I feel like I should just... Oh, I can scroll, actually. Can you scroll, Mike? Okay. I find it a little annoying that it's so hard to navigate between pages. And if I make one mistake and I click uh, 
the wrong page, I have to like wait for that menu animation. That's true, yeah. Forced to wait through animations to navigate pages unless you type. What if I type a different URL? So if I type slash contact. Yeah, then it'll Maybe load. You yeah, you shouldn't have to do that. One thing I did with my portfolio is I had something like this where you can have like a cool animation that would take a couple seconds to go in between pages. But then I also had a really fast way for those who don't have the patience to see it. It's a novel effect. It's cool for the first time. And then you're like, wait, let me go back to that. And you're like, ugh. yeah. So if you go to the contact form and then yeah, I see it. you have a contact form. And then if I scroll down, you have start a project. And there's only, this is the only way to get this form and the whole site is this one button on this one very last page. I can't get to this any other way. You are removing business from yourself by forcing me to figure out where this button is. Yeah. If you're gonna talk money, That's... you should make it easy to talk money. Your LinkedIn icon needs to have a white fill. It's difficult to read, just looks like a black dot. Uh, Facebook icon needs to have a white fill as well. This was made with the best intentions. And for that, you know, you can't be upset. It's a cool site, just novel effect. Anyways, we appreciate you. Thanks for sending it in, man. <laughs>